Okay, I know philosophically there are a lot of people that are going to go out there and say, Lego, what the hell are you doing, man? This is not a dub. How could you go out there and even suggest the idea that this was a good move? Come on, bro. And I know there's a lot of y'all that'll say that, but I wanted to hear just a little bit of a perspective from the opposite side when it comes to this trade and how the Vancouver Canucks ultimately navigated this draft pick. So, today what I wanted to do was revisit the Canucks and the Red Wings Philip Hronick trade. I know it was really recent, like it's not like it's an old thing, this ain't a one year later video, isn't it? But what I wanted to do was go over some of the perspectives regarding the draft pick the Vancouver Canucks sent away and the overall value of said pick. If you don't remember, just a few weeks ago, the Vancouver Canucks traded away a first round pick and a second round pick in exchange for Hronik and a fourth. Now, Hronik himself is not a bad player. He's 25 years old, he's a right-handed defenseman, he's probably the most talented right-handed defenseman the Vancouver Canucks have had in years, and it's a pretty low bar, I know that, but it still is kind of making a statement there. This is a player who, before he got sidelined for the rest of the season, was at 38 points in 60 Detroit Red Wings games on the year. He's always been a pretty capable guy, and he's been one of the better guys suiting up for the Wings the past few seasons. And so, as a player getting acquired by Vancouver, who is signed to the end of 2024, making 4.4 AAV, this is a player that makes the roster better. And it was a pretty big deal, needless to say, when the Vancouver Canucks got this guy in their system because the return was pretty significant. A first round pick and a second round pick, not just any first round pick, but the first round pick the team acquired in the Bo Horvat trade with the Islanders not more than several months prior. And I said it back then, and I'll say it again just because everybody needs to hear this every time we bring it up, but the philosophical idea of the Hronik trade, the reason the team made it, that in itself was the problem. Not Philip Hronik himself as a player. We know Hronik is talented, we know he's young, we know he has a good career ahead of him, he's probably gonna get points and he's probably gonna be a talented player on the right side with Vancouver. But the fact that the Canucks made the trade in the first place was questionable and that was the biggest thing here. Why trade away a first round pick in exchange for a guy who is already in his prime right now and whom you're going to have to re-sign and with a trade like this you're sort of signaling that the intent is to win immediately rather than waiting a little bit which I mean look with guys like Petey and Hughes and Miller on the team right now it sort of makes sense why they're doing it I'm not necessarily agreeing I'm just saying it makes sense but we had radio hits like the one that Thomas Drance did right after the trade was made on Sportsnet saying, hey, why are they trading away a first round pick in the midst of a quote unquote rebuild? Either way, though, what I wanted to do was revisit that trade, not because Philip Pronick himself is doing well or whatever. He's actually out for the year. He had one point in the four games he played with the Canucks, which isn't an amazing point production total, but you could definitely see that he was the best right-handed defenseman the team had in that four-game stint. It just didn't really work with him and Hughes on the same power play unit, to be honest. But... The reason we're making this trade, not trade, the reason we're making this video, excuse me, is because of a post I saw on the Islanders subreddit. Now, don't ask why I was scrolling on the Islanders subreddit, but pretty much what the fans over there on our aisles ended up doing was talking about the Connor Bedard sweepstakes. And the reason this relates to our conversation about Hronik is because the Islanders' first round pick was sent over to Vancouver, which was then sent over to Detroit. Let's read this post made on the Isle sub. Two months ago, folks thought we were actually in the Bedard sweepstakes. And listen, I get it. There's a lot of work to be done in these next three games, but here we are in playoff position in the final stretch without our most dynamic offensive player. I'm scared, but I'm optimistic. My main point here is don't count the boys out just yet. When the Horvat deal was made, there were lots of LOL, they're still going to be in the basement, why is Lou doing this? We ain't in the basement, folks. Let's see what the next week brings. And then the top comment goes out there and says, to be fair, all the Doomers are in the Mets subreddit right now. And all Mets issues aside, we have to talk about the Islanders and where they are in the standings, because if you go over to the Tankathon race, right now, the Islanders have the projected 17th overall pick. This is because they are literally in the wildcard at the time of recording this audio, and it sort of makes the Pronic return a little bit more easy to stomach. 
Because part of the reason Canucks fans were ticked off about Hronik getting acquired by the Canucks in general was because, hey, that Islanders first round pick could be something in the 13, 14, 15 range. And if it's even better than that, if it's somewhere in the top 10, then all of a sudden it's unprotected for next year. Which means that if the Islanders crap the bet again next year, then hey, you have yourselves a pretty good pickup. This could be like the San Jose Sharks first in 2020 getting sent over to Ottawa and them selecting Tim Stutzla as a result. That was one of those moves. Vancouver has the potential to do that if the dominoes fall right and the Islanders start sucking and they're not able to recuperate themselves over the summer. But, with hindsight included, we could see that this has not been the case. And I know it's biased to go out there and say, Lego, you're talking about this from the perspective of hindsight being included. Just because things worked out in the long term does not mean that the chances of that happening when the trade was made were any slimmer. It still has to be considered how things could have gone the opposite way. And therein lies the argument, because I get it, it's a totally fair, valid point to make, and I agree with it, it's just... I don't know, things worked out this way. The Islanders are probably going to find themselves in the postseason, knock on wood, they end up missing out, and let's say they get to the third round. Let's say they go out there and go in a run. Then, all of a sudden, this draft pick is 17th overall, maybe 18th overall. If the Islanders win, then hey, okay, that pick becomes 29, 30, 31 overall-ish. So, does it feel a little bit better if you're a Canucks fan? Thinking about the idea of trading away a 31st overall pick for Philip Ronick rather than the 13th or 14th overall pick a lot of Canucks fans were hoping that pick would have been instead, the Islanders have been winning, and they've been doing so without Barzal. And this is part of the reason I was also so hesitant to being excited about an unprotected 2024 first for the Islanders, because we've been saying this the entire time, as long as Lou Lamorello was around, the Islanders are going to try to contend. And next season, if you have a team that has Barzal, hopefully healthy, Bo Horvat, hopefully healthy, and Ilya Sorokin, hopefully healthy, then there's no reason that the Islanders should be bad enough to justify projecting their 2024 unprotected pick to being somewhere in the top five or whatever, like the Ottawa Senator San Jose situation from a few years ago. There's no reason to believe that's even a possibility with this team being in the position they're at. They're going to try to contend, and they've got good enough players that if Ilya Sorokin craps the bed so hard that this team is like bottom five in the league, then I'ma eat my hat. That's just so improbable to me thinking about that type of outcome. And so, with all of the hindsight included, does it feel a little bit better now? Does the Philip Hronik trade sit in the brain a little bit better than it had before? That Islanders pick is a lot worse now than it was a few months ago, so does that change your perception of the trade today? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about Philip Hronik and his short stint as a member of the Vancouver Canucks. Do you like what you see? Do you think he's got more to improve on? Do you think the Canucks had themselves a good enough reason to make this trade? Do you believe in the Islanders to keep on winning and stay in the playoffs? And if so, does that change your perception as to how everything went down with this trade, with the Hronik deal, etc, etc, etc? Thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this video. And bye.